Schmidt, and I'm 82 years old. I'm Manfred Schmidt, and I'm speaking only Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> You're 90, 91, right? 92. We got married in um, November, November 22nd, um, 1958. We've lived in the same house for a long time. We've been married a long time. Whatever we do, we end up doing for a long time. And that's true about Mitchell Scarlet Woods, too. I was a school librarian for 30 years, been retired for almost as long as I work now. I never retired. I'm still working in the woods, but nobody is paying me. In 1965, when we moved in here, the co-op was new, and I would change into my jeans and start walking in the woods, mm -hmm. just as a change of pace. Um, and uh, that was, you know, I didn't know anything about that woods. I didn't know who owned it, mm -hmm. but it was right out, you know, just right out the back door or the front door and you know around the corner yeah and it was just very enticing one day we did go in the woods and took a walk and we saw the developer uh, the, not the developer but the uh, oh, surveyor surveyor in there cutting already some trees down and marking it mm -hmm. and so we yeah. want to find out what was going out and who owned it and uh, who owned it and then we found out the school want to build a high school in there. The, there was a lot of building going on. And mm -hmm. so people were losing spaces that they had become accustomed to using to development. There was something cool about all these people living close together, but having the woods as an outlet. Mm -hmm. And people, um, when they thought it was endangered, really rallied. So mm -hmm. we, got, we rallied people in the schools. Our daughter was going into Mitchell. We the, did our PR. I yeah, mean, we, we had, did a good job. We took people on Talk. walks in the woods. We did birdathons to raise money. And I got called the school board up, and he says, "We didn't know there's it's a wood here." And he says, "We won't touch it. There will be stay." And he bought it up at the ninth meeting, and they canceled all the stuff. And says Manfred, "It's yours." You know? <laughs> well, the first challenge was um, preserving that central 40 acres and, and getting the school board to agree to not build a high school there. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, the next piece that we concentrated on was trying to get the city to buy the air, the 25 acres that included most of, it, of the marsh. Mm -hmm. Not most of the marsh, but about half of the marsh. And once we got those things done, the last 25 acres took us 25 years to get. But we didn't know what we were doing. I caught, we had I, no idea. We would never, never have started, I think, if we thought it would take 50 years. <laughs> we probably never would have. We wouldn't, right. have been, we wouldn't have had the guts to start. Now, he yeah. might have, but I probably would have given up. The but, fact is that instead of the housing there and people living close, more people living close together, there is a getaway. And mm -hmm. That was amazing during the pandemic. People yeah. who could not do anything else found the woods for the first time. And it was, it was wonderful to know that we had been part of preserving that. And, and, and we didn't realize in the beginning that we were part of a movement. Right. But we really were. Yeah. Uh, and just thinking, if you love a place, um, you try to preserve it. It's not going to be as easy, maybe, because I think we were in the right place at the right time. And we stayed in place. And we were persistent, and it would take it takes persistence, but it also takes building relationships, and uh, you utilize whatever talents people bring you. If you. If you care enough, you keep on doing it.